Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video, we are going to be previewing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Week 17 matchup versus the Atlanta Falcons. So guys, without further ado, let's talk about it. This is the Buccaneers season finale. Unfortunately, it is the Buccaneers last game of the year for the 2019 season. They don't get it. Go to the playoffs. And guys, I know it sucks. I know it's unfortunate. But you know what? Uh, this season was an improvement on previous years for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, okay? Uh, this will be the first year in the last two years where the Buccaneers uh, do not have double-digit losses. That's positive, considering they went 5-11 and 11 the last two years. So that's an improvement by itself. But we've seen so much improvement on both sides of the ball. We finally have an amazing pass rush again. And we started to get there last year with Jason Pierre-Paul. But it has just been taken to a completely new height with guys like Shaq Barrett, Carl Nassib re-emerging again JPP coming back from his terrible terrible injury that he suffered among other guys like Vita Vea and Dominican Sue and others so that's a positive the wide receiver core looks pretty much as strong as ever with Chris Godwin and Mike Evans just being gods I mean they're both Pro Bowl wide receivers right now that's absolutely amazing we have a young secondary that looks like they're seemingly coming along their way as the season has progressed Carlton Davis has looked amazing Jamal Dean has looked good as well and Sean Murphy Bunting looks like to be a young budding star as well so there's positives on both sides of the ball and you know what we even have a kicking situation that is respectable again so it seems like everything is trending in the right direction for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going into next season. But getting a little bit more in-depth with this preview, now I talked about the Atlanta Falcons earlier this year, but I do want to bring up this point again, is Dirk Cutter and Raheem Morris have revenge games coming up to end out the year, and how poetic would it be if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeated their former head coach in the last game of their first year with their new head coach? That would be pretty poetic if you ask me, but you know, some weird stuff going on in Atlanta right now. I believe Dan Quinn and the Atlanta Falcons general manager, they are both slated to return for next season for the Atlanta Falcons. A very interesting move, although they have been on a little bit of a streak to end out the year, much like how the Buccaneers are right now, except for that game versus the Texans. But we don't talk about that game versus the Texans, but the Atlanta Falcons, they're ending the year pretty strong, same as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And it looks like both Dan Quinn and the Atlanta Falcons general manager are coming back for next season. To go a little bit even more in depth with that, the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, Dan Quinn, and said that he is more inclined to have Dirk Cutter return for the Atlanta Falcons for the 2020 season. And now, even going further than that, Raheem Morris is now their full-time defensive coordinator. And you can imagine that he is also going to be back with the Atlanta Falcons for the 2020 NFL season. So yeah, former Buccaneers head coaches are just littering the Atlanta Falcons coaching staff for not just this season, but for possibly future years as well. Very, very interesting. Keep an eye on both those guys, Raheem Morris and Dirk Cutter, and hopefully the Buccaneers can get a win against some of their former head coaches. I already talked about finishing strong, but I'm going to say it again, guys. I mean, this team needs to finish strong. We need to make a statement to end the year 8-8. Eight and eight. We will officially not have a losing record at that point. That would be pretty nice in my opinion. And I know I said the Buccaneers were going to finish 10-6. and six. I was wrong with that. But guys, if I'm being honest... I'm generally okay with finishing the year eight and eight. And I know a lot of people are going to freak out and say, well, if we're not making the playoffs, then who cares? Guys, we went five and 11 the last two years. And there's not many years before that even when we've had a, a, a non-losing record, okay? So if we finish eight and eight, you know what? Hey, I'm okay with that because that shows improvement. And I'm 1 million percent okay with improvement involving this team. So yeah, if we finish eight and eight, I'm pretty good with that. You know, honestly, even if we finish seven and nine, I'm still okay with that as well because that's two more wins than we've had the last two years. So I'm definitely down for that and I'm definitely down for this team finishing strong. And I know people are going to say, oh, but tank for a draft position. Guys, I'm always going to root for the team to win. I understand the idea of getting a better draft pick, but you know, I'm just always going to root for the team to win. Now, guys, the last thing I want to mention here in this preview video is talking about some of the expiring contracts that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had. Now, I've been mentioning this all year. You have Rashad Perriman. He's going to have an expiring contract. Jameis Winston has an expiring contract. That's you know, one of the big ones, we'll see what happens with that. On the defensive side of the ball, you have so many guys. Uh, Carl Nassib has an expiring contract. Jason Pierre-Paul has an expiring contract. Shaq Barrett has an expiring contract. You have Ndamukong Sue who has an expiring contract. 
so many guys have an expiring contract. The Buccaneers, they have a lot of money. I believe they have $98 million in cap space, but they are going to have to pay a lot of these guys to come back. And you know what? I'm totally okay with that. I know people might freak out if all the Buccaneers do in the offseason, um, besides the draft, of course, is just keep a lot of their own guys and not delve too much into free agency. But could you really blame them? I mean, there's been a lot of positives to the team this year, especially in the wide receiver core and especially in the front seven, specifically the run defense and the pass rush. So I don't blame the Buccaneers at all for using a lot of their cap space, you know, maybe half of it, maybe more than half of it to bring a lot of their own players back because the players have been playing pretty good this year, all things considered. I mean, Shaq Barrett deserves to come back. You can make a very, very good argument for Jameis Winston to come back. Same thing can be said with JPP, Carl Nassib, and Dominican Sue, among others. And I would also like to see Brashad Perriman back as well. Um, all the guys I listed, I want to see back. So, yeah, these guys all have expiring contracts. We need to see how they finish out the year. Hopefully, a lot of these guys finish out strong, break a couple of records, set some own NFL records, stuff along those lines. And the Buccaneers can work on bringing some of these guys back. And it should be a lot of fun, and I'm very, very excited to see how all of these players finish out the year. But guys, that's it for this very, very short preview video. I hope you all enjoyed, and man, it's been a really fun year. It's been a really up and down year, and I know the Buccaneers didn't make the playoffs, but guys, we improved from the last two years, and that's good enough for me. Also, Rojo Flex shirt. Shout out to Gabby for getting me this shirt. She's absolutely lovely. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, I will be at the game. Look out for a number 15 Hill jersey walking around. If you see me, come say hey. Let's talk about some Buccaneers football. I believe I'm going to be in section 316. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. And we'll see you in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now. And go Bucks.